I'm Amrita Sarkar. Um, I just finished defending my PhD thesis last week, um, so I guess that was a month shy of uh, completing my uh, fifth year here at Sinai. Uh, I've been a PhD student at Dr. Eric Sobey's lab over the last few years, um, and our lab does research on um, cardiac electrophysiology. Um, so before I came to Sinai, um, well, I'm from India originally, but I moved here um, after high school and uh, I went and did my undergrad at Middlebury College where I pursued a double major in math and biochemistry. And immediately after Middlebury, I took a year off to do research at a lab at uh, Washington University in St. Louis. And uh, while I was there, I applied to several graduate schools and chose to come to Mount Sinai. So the program I'm in right now is uh, called the Computational Biology Program. Um, and it's an interdisciplinary uh, uh, PhD program that's uh, basically uh, at, at two institutions, NYU and Mount Sinai. And as I mentioned before I came here, I did my undergrad, um, for my undergrad I had two majors, math and biochemistry. So the, I, I basically wanted to use mathematical tools to, uh, to study biological systems. So my lab here at Sinai is interested in understanding um, electrophysiological properties of cardiac myocytes and ha specifically how they contribute to uh, the development of diseases um, and cardiac arrhythmias. So my most recent paper that was, uh, uh, that's going to be published in October of this year deals with uh, this observation that when you administer a drug to block a particular channel in the heart, um, this drug can have very, very different effects on uh, different patients. It can have uh, it can prove fatal in some cases, whereas in you know many people's cases the effects may not be so bad. And so we use a rigorous mathematical method to examine the reasons for these interpatient differences. Um, and basically, uh, we um, came up with a way to understand how these differential ion channel expressions in uh, various patients can contribute to these observed phenotypes. Okay, so an interesting story about me and Sinai. Um, well, I guess one thing that keeps happening to me most often is, um, you know, whenever I take a cab that picks me up from, from around here, because I, I live right across the street from my lab um, at 98th and Madison, um, so any anytime I get picked up by a cab driver, uh, they ask me, so, you know, do you work here? I'm like, no, I don't, I study here. And then they automatically assume that I'm a doctor. And one thing that has happened to me many, many times is that um, the cabbie then, you know, either describes some symptom that's, uh, that he's been experiencing and wants me to suggest remedies or, you know, or, or talks about some family member of his who's either a medical student or a doctor. And then I have to correct them and tell them again and again, okay, you know, I'm actually getting my PhD, I'm not an MD. So, you know, I have to tell them I'm going to be a doctor, but not that kind of a doctor. Um, so as I mentioned before, I'm from India, and I've always been very, very interested in um, using um, science to, or, or scientific um, methods to try and do something development related for uh, the third world. Um, so I actually just uh, got into uh, an MBA program for scientists and engineers in Paris. So that program starts in January, um, and I'm going to go there with the hope of learning um, basic business strategy um, and being able to apply that towards uh, commercialization of technologies that might benefit uh, third world economies. Uh, specifically, I would like to, down the line, be involved in um, policy sort of uh, decisions regarding pharmaceutical pricing and distribution in the third world. Um, because you know the, the lack of affordable medication is such a pressing issue in these countries. Yes, I would most enthusiastically recommend Mount Sinai to prospective students. Um, and there are two reasons I think that Sinai is a very good place to come to. The first deals with the quality of the education that you're going to get. Um, I think Sinai offers uh, world-class courses in, um, in, in very, very relevant disciplines. For, for me, for example, um, I am in the computational biology program, and I was able to take um, very, very, um, very helpful classes 
in, um, in biology, in, in basic biological sciences during my first two years here, um, in addition to specialized courses in my own MTA, a multidisciplinary training area. Um, and in addition, I was able to supplement these courses with uh, state-of-the-art courses in um, mathematics and computer science at the Courant Institute at NYU. Um, also, another aspect of the very top quality education that students will get here is that um, you know, there is a variety of uh, labs in every possible area you can think of that, um, that do very um, relevant work in uh, clinically important areas uh, because in Sinai, um, the, the grad school is tied to the hospital here. It, it makes sense that um, a lot of the research that is done here is in clinically relevant areas. Um, so that is the first uh, education aspect. The second aspect is, um, you know, the the type of life you are likely to have at a city in a city like New York. So when I was applying um, to graduate schools, I had gotten selected by um, several other East Coast schools, some of which um, were, um, you know, not in um, big cities like New York. It's hard to. Uh, be in a city as uh, massive and lively and diverse um, as New York City. And I think when you're a young person, um, given that you're going to commit four to five years of your life um, to, to the PhD program, it's very important um, where, where you spend those four to five years in your 20s. And um, I'm very happy I was able to do that in the city.